What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Yo, yo, yo. What's happening? <laughs> Are we so, going to talk quietly the entire podcast? We sound always great on these things, so it doesn't matter what. But where are we? We are sitting in oh, on location, on location, waiting recording for a, a podcast. Actually, we probably should make sure that we're able to board this plane in time and figure out where our gate's at. Yeah, we have an hour until we got to board. I don't know, maybe a little sooner, based on my my clock. We'll see. Yeah, All we right. got roughly an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we'll see how long this goes. We are sitting next to a, uh, a gate that doesn't have anybody, but a plane might show up, and then all of a sudden it might get really loud, yeah. and that's cool too. We'll just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably will hear background noise from the airport. Yeah, um, this is a unique one. <laughs> this would be a unique one. But yeah, we actually just got done doing an event. Yeah, um, that was in Delray Beach, Florida. It was for Rich Sheffern's uh, CSIB event. We had mm-hmm. a you know an episode that came out coalition to say internet business yes we had an episode that came out a couple weeks ago where we interviewed rich about the event and what we we're going to be doing there and um you know yeah. pretty much like everybody who's anybody in the marketing world kind of showed up to this thing yeah. like russell brunson was there yeah. dean graciosi was there jeff uh, walker jeff walker uh, perry marshall uh obviously rich sheffer and mike's same mm-hmm. uh i mean we can list off tons and tons of names of of who was there but list, it was like yeah. a Dennis Yu was there. Dennis is, uh, yeah, and you've heard a lot of these guys, or some of these guys on the show, but future ones definitely. Yeah. And that's what's really cool. And this this whole thing was like a 24-hour live stream. You probably heard us talking about it if you're on yeah. your email list or on the blog, but um, actually Rich was on the show, so uh, you yeah. probably tuned into that. But this was, I mean, talk about legends. Yeah just everybody in the same roof like i was there's literally was billions of dollars of net worth under one roof yeah yeah and we're gonna two million plus in art on the walls yeah (laughs) and probably thousands of dollars in alcohol and cigars yeah (laughs) probably tens of thousands of dollars in alcohol and cigar was it's wild man um but yeah, I, you know, it was, we're going to get into some of the uh, the big takeaways and some of our mm-hmm. thoughts around the event and things like that. I'm looking at my notes just to jog my memory. <laughs> um, but before we do, I want to remind you that we are taking notes on this episode as well, always. like we always do. And these notes, actually, this whole model, like we're explaining it to a lot of people, mm-hmm. and they're just like, dude, what is this thing? You know? Yeah. Like they're, I think the whole newsletter from a podcast and all that stuff is actually rad. So um, hustleandflowchart.com slash comp, or, C-O-M-P. Or you can text the word COMP, C-O-M-P, to 38470. We don't have kazoos. No, so we don't have kazoos actually, this week. I do week. have mine, but it might be a little weird. <laughs> Did you really bring your kazoo with you this time? It was time? just on the bottom of my backpack. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. You wanted to do a kazoo jam <laughs> session while we were out here. So um, get the notes because uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about here, but there's a lot of takeaways. <laughs> There'll be takeaways, There'll I be promise. There'll be a lot of takeaways. Because we have our notes from the event, and we're going to yeah. share some of our takeaways. So those takeaways will be in the notes. Yeah. And... Um, so I guess, you know, where to start here there, we didn't even know what it was going into here. We knew there was going to be a live stream. There was actually a mastermind in front of the live stream. Yeah. Well, do we want to start with like how we even got the invite? Like what led to this point? Yeah, I can. So it all started basically eight years ago or so Mm -hmm. when I was doing the whole video agency business, doing a lot of launches and, you know, designing slides and, and sales videos for big things. Um, I was building up a network and there was a guy named Mars Burden who mm-hmm. runs a company called Launchman. Yeah. And he's basically, uh, if you ever seen like a live stream online in the online space, I mean, even working for guys like Tony Robbins, mm-hmm. um, Dean Graziosi and stuff like that. And I think, uh, I mean, just all these massive names. He's done a lot of Frank yeah. Kern stuff and, you know, Jeff Walker. Yeah. Um, My first experience with Mars was... Um, I did a live stream with Dan Kennedy and Joe Polish, Polish that's back right. in either 2010 or 2011, uh-huh. somewhere around there. Uh-huh. That was my first introduction to Mars, but I didn't really get to know Mars like you did back then. Yeah. You, you sort of really bonded well, and built a connection with him. We talked the same language. Yeah. That's why. And, and he, yeah, it's just really cool because he told me, he's like, there's just something unique with you. You're good people. You do what you say. And, you know, you're just kind of fun to be around. So basically he's like, hey, that character, 
eight years later, you know, we just kind of stayed in touch. We never actually worked as like mm -hmm. a client relationship kind of thing. It was just more like, hey, this guy's cool. He's doing similar stuff. And I just hung around, yeah. help each other out. And it turned into, hey, Rich wants to get on podcasts. We're doing this big live stream. Mm -hmm. You guys are podcasting. You have a big network. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's work together. Yeah. So we ended, up, we ended up working closely with Rich to help get Rich on a whole bunch of podcasts. So if you've been hearing from Rich a lot and he seems like he's been like popping onto a lot of podcasts lately that's probably why. what we were doing for him <laughs> was helping him get on a whole bunch of shows um and then he's also planning on launching his own podcast and we're going to work mm -hmm. a little bit behind the scenes on helping him with his podcast secrets of being rich is yeah, the, the working title rich yep so um yeah so that's the story the backstory um mm -hmm. and what's really cool is you know going into this event there are a lot of people we knew, mm -hmm. but a lot of people we didn't know. Yeah. And, a, a, you know, a decent amount that we knew personally, or mm -hmm. we had enough history where we were able to quickly, you know, get into like, oh man, it just felt like a bunch of buddies hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, there, there was a lot of people there that we've had on the podcast mm -hmm. in the past and built mm -hmm. a relationship with there, or but went out to their face events to face, and, you know, and things yeah, like that. Like Perry Talk Marshall was, an, was one that we had on the podcast, sort of built a relationship with him through emails and, you know, we made some training for his members area mm -hmm. and he recorded a podcast with us, but we never actually met him in person until this week. Mm -hmm. And we got to sit down and, you know, chat with him for, I mean, I chatted with him for probably a good hour and you chatted with him for probably an hour beyond that mm -hmm. you know um, and we talked all about i mean all so, like his evolutions 2.0 2.0 book mm -hmm. and he's doing some cool stuff there that we'll probably have him back on the show and talking about that because it's yeah. super fascinating yeah um, todd herman was one that uh we actually met in person years and years and years mm -hmm. back but um yeah we were yeah. hanging out with him he's been on the show alter ego effect ryan levesque was one that's mm -hmm. been on the show and we'd kind of emailed back and forth over mm -hmm. the years but uh finally got to spend time with him in person i'd never met him in person before no. until this event yeah um just, i mean it's just it was uh, I've never seen like a just a collection a collection of folks yeah uh, but you know like everyone gathering of this caliber and and really I would say just this kind of influence yeah and it's not it doesn't mean like how much money but like literally the influence that these people have had on literally millions of people mm -hmm. I mean Russell Brunson was there as well Dean Graciosi yep. like these guys everyone was flying in to support Rich which yeah. is really cool because Rich Sheffern was pretty freaking massive for you know having us come around yeah in strategy so yeah i mean it, it sort of brings me to a topic that i wanted to get into on this episode which is the topic of imposter syndrome because mm. one of the things that that sort of was going around the room a little bit was you know everybody had it like mm -hmm. th these people that you think are at like the highest level of their industry, like the titans of their business, mm -hmm. like uh, you, we're going That's around right. the room talking to people in this mastermind. So there was a mastermind on the first day mm -hmm. and then, and house. then, you yeah. know, five hours after the mastermind ended, the live stream started and went for 24 mm -hmm. hours straight. Rich, I think was awake for 48 hours straight through. So freaking at least balls to the wall hats <laughs> off to him I, a lot of monster energy during strike. yeah he was he likes the, the orange flavor a lot of caffeine is. was drank and a lot of cigars were smoked during the thing if you watch the live stream you know yeah it's all um, recorded but uh yeah like as we we kind of talk to different people around this event you sort of learn that the imposter syndrome thing is kind of it, it, you know it's a real thing no matter what level you're at mm -hmm. like we're talking to some of the biggest level people in our industry some of the biggest names mm -hmm. that, like everybody's heard of if you've been in internet marketing if you haven't been living under a rock you know most of the people that were there <laughs> and you talk to any of them and almost all of them go i don't know what i'm doing in this room i don't know how i got this it's invite it's right true. and like these are the big names and we're going to this event kind of feeling similar going man I don't know how we got this invite I don't know what what people see in us that makes them think we're on this caliber mm -hmm. but when you get into this room you actually realize that most of these people feel the exact same way yeah no mm -hmm. that was the that was the feeling and um, what's also really cool so in addition to that there's a lot of um, I was hearing a lot of stories just in general with these folks on their trek to becoming more influential and mm -hmm. better in business is a lot of people just self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mental blockages. And, and what's really cool is you're hearing people talk about that on our show here. It's mm -hmm. kind of a, a, a discussion.
depression topic we like to bring out because it's very relatable and everyone experiences it. Yeah. But it's really cool to hear that some of the biggest names that you think have it all figured out for the longest time, they were just self-sabotaging them. Think Usually that comes down to them feeling like they're not worthy mm-hmm. of success, of money, of whatever it is, you know? Mm-hmm. So you see a lot of ups and downs, big launches, but then big, you know, drops. Yeah. And then almost like you have to keep rebuilding and a lot of these people uh it takes a long long time to figure that out but these were common stories we heard Mm -hmm. both on the live stream and also just in conversation yeah so and then you know this all relates to imposter syndrome is Mm -hmm. not thinking you're good enough your self-image and worth yeah um so it's just really cool to like you know if you feel like you're like that too it's cool yeah. Don't worry. The best of them have got that too. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it it was really, really eye-opening to me because I, I tend to struggle with the imposter syndrome, like even oh, just yeah. having the podcast and having some of our guests on and going, man, I don't even know how we landed this guest mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. I sort of struggle with that imposter syndrome thing. But to learn that, uh, you know, no matter what level you're at, everybody has like at least some you know there's definitely some people that had egos and you know think they're the hottest shit in the world i'm not gonna you know name names but there's like you know it's a spectrum right there's there's (laughs) all sorts of uh all all sorts of levels of the imposter syndrome but everybody kind of has it a little bit yeah yeah there's a lot i mean it's just i don't know it's just really cool it's a relatability thing and i feel like um we've talked a lot about that on this show and uh, what we were told, I mean, here's something that we're just, we were blind to is that many of the folks in that room have heard our show, mm-hmm. our listeners of our show. Yes. That was, that blew uh, me away many, when, many. when these people that we really, really look up to and highly respect and maybe have been following for 10 plus years are telling us, I love your show. Yeah. Yours is the only podcast <laughs> I listen to. We actually had, we were, we were talking to Jeff Walker, uh-huh. of product launch formula f- fame, right? Uh-huh. We were talking to him, telling him about a podcast. He's like, I've really been getting into podcasts lately. What's yours called? And as he was standing in front of us, he pulled out his phone and subscribed to our show. And we're like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that's, sort of a life goal achieved right there you know (laughs) i mean there's just so much influence coming from just him alone yeah and let alone everyone else in that room and i think it's just really cool to um and i think at the end of the day what's really nice to see is that these people are genuinely awesome people and Mm -hmm. there's something being told as well is like when you get to this certain level uh, obviously everyone has egos, but they're not egos. Like no one's showing off. Mm-hmm. No one's trying to say like, I made this much money or my launch was better or my email list is like this or mm-hmm. people are there to genuinely support. And especially the fact that like everyone flew out mm-hmm. from their busy lives. We flew from San Diego, you know, Perry f- flew from Chicago. I mean, Russell mm-hmm. flew from uh, Boise, right? Boise, yeah, Idaho. I mean, literally around i think someone um flew from australia I there's mean, somebody that was that was australian i don't know if she flew from yeah, australia okay. or not but <laughs> well she's i mean it's just it was like literally a, a whole flow of folks but really what that shows and then when discussing with people is the ego doesn't get in the way mm-hmm. in just like doing good work and serving mm-hmm. and and being a cool person and i think that <laughs> Those are good qualities to take away if you're looking for, you know, high achievement in life and being really the best of you. Well, this is something I was saying at dinner last night. We actually had dinner with a couple of cool people that we met at this Mm -hmm. event. And um, Greg and Rob. Yeah, Rob (laughs) Rob Kosberg. And what was uh, Greg? uh, Greg. Oh, man documentary man keep talking i'm gonna gonna pull up his last name (laughs) well well, anyway last night we were sitting at at dinner with them and one of the things that was sort of a realization that i had is that the this greg roulette greg roulette yes and he he's put out some amazing documentary stuff one about jay abraham and all that the jay abraham story yeah yeah yeah. check it out um but one of the things that i that was sort of a realization for me that i was talking about at dinner was like it's really, really hard to reach the level of success that most of the people in that room reached Mm -hmm. by being an asshole. True. Right? Like most of them are like, what you walk around the room and you talk to people and it's some of the friendliest, open, most giving, sharing, like they're willing to share their tactics with you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Like those were the types of people in the room. It didn't really feel like a ton of egos. It didn't feel like a ton of arrogance. And I think that is why they succeed is Mm -hmm. because they are just so freely giving and so freely sharing things with other people and if Mm -hmm. you ask them a question they're all an open book everybody's very felt very transparent there about what they struggled with and what was working well for them and things like that yeah and i feel like those are the reasons they're at where they're at 
and it's like the ones that that sort of have the ego that think like oh i ran a i ran a launch and it did a million dollars and now mm-hmm. i'm the hottest shit on earth mm-hmm. like those are the people that after that launch they seem to fade away and you never see mm. from them again right but the ones that have this longevity that i've been around for years and years and years the same people we're talking about today that we were talking about 10 years ago that right. are still in the game those are the ones that are just like on another level like willing to help people mm-hmm. yeah no it shows and yeah it's just really cool so i think it's like all of this is just a good example of of what to mold and to model yeah and um yeah it could be applied everywhere so i mean to say that there weren't any take or you know like just a handful of takeaways or like i don't even know we haven't even debriefed our brains completely on this thing yet yeah and um you know we just sent an email to our customers and i think i had like eight different takeaways there Mm -hmm. i was like oh my god there's like 25 thousand more <laughs> you know yeah. to, to go from so i mean I, I, our take you know so it started in a mastermind mm-hmm. uh, at rich's house rich shepherd's yeah. place in del rey beautiful place um super nice to you know have him welcome us all into his house mm-hmm. and it was basically a full day mastermind and um what was really cool is a lot of agora's team was there oh yeah so paradigm press is the division of agora or you know subsidiary of agora mm-hmm. that publishes rich and mm-hmm. them alone they're a hundred million dollar company yeah like that's not like gore as a whole but just that one uh, yeah. subsidiary and <laughs> what's really cool is it's only run by about 30 people <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, that just shows how lean and mean they are and what's um, a big takeaway overall is because a lot of them were all there and literally like just giving it out obviously there's probably some stuff we probably shouldn't be naming in detail yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, not, I'm not sure how many of the tactics we're allowed to talk about we're going to talk strokes. about some big takeaways but you know with agora they actually broke down their business model and where all their money comes from and how like how they're doing it and all that stuff and it was it was amazing but i think that's the kind of stuff they're like yeah kind of keep this on the down low so <laughs> we, we can't get into that but we will talk about some of the bigger bigger higher level takeaways we've had from the event yeah and and really i would say a pretty common theme with listening to every single one of their employees that we were chatting with and the leaders of their their division as well is uh, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. It's all about systems. Everything is very system oriented. Mm -hmm. There's routines. That's why they can hire employees that are literally start from interns and then they move them up. They actually have contests. I was talking to one of their media buyers. Mm -hmm. They run contests and pay a certain amount Mm -hmm. to like whoever wins. Yeah. And, um, you know, and actually they'll compete against existing employees sometimes too. Yeah. And then, you know, like it's so. They definitely create like a sort of environment of. Uh, competition, it's right? Competition, like, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the people on the Agora team, or even though they're all in the same company, they're all like sort of fighting for bragging rights on mm-hmm. a lot of things. Yeah, and and uh, you know, and at the core of what they do, they have great offers mm-hmm. and great copy, mm-hmm. and they just stick to those. You know, copy is their backbone, of course. That's Agora in a nutshell. Yeah, but um, they are so systemized with how they email and they cross sell the number of offers they have and they can pull from. And this is what was a takeaway talking to their media buyer. I'm totally blanking on his name. Um, is, uh, you know, think which, what kind of company is going to make more money? One that just has like one offer Mm -hmm. or one that has like 20 offers. Yeah. And when I say 20 offers, that doesn't mean brand new offers. It could just be different angles of an offer Mm -hmm. or what they do are premiums. So if you're selling like a newsletter, for instance, there's like this thing that's kind of bonused in on top of it. Mm -hmm. And that can be used to target different audience groups, you Mm -hmm. know, different avatars and different interests. So it's like a new lead in. Yeah. And imagine if the more of those you have, the more opportunities you have to sell, the more emails you can send that don't sound the same, but they can all lead to the same ish offer. Mm -hmm. That's in, they literally have over 200 offers that they rotate. Yeah. And so every single email has an offer of some sort that's relevant. And literally it's like endless amounts of content they can write around those offers. And then of course, you know, present something and make some revenue. Yeah. So it's in, they just literally rinse and repeat that every single day. Yeah. They, they call it the hit factory model. That's right. Right. Like the hit factory model is essentially you've got 
copywriters who mm -hmm. can make your copy look really good. You've got media buyers who drive the traffic to the copy and then mm -hmm. you have gurus, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like mm -hmm. this triad that they have media buyers, copywriters, gurus. Gurus go and create the content. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are like writing all the stuff that goes into the newsletter, all of the, the content that you're essentially buying. They write the emails that mm -hmm. go out, all that sort of thing. And then the once the content is created, the copywriters find that angle, that hook, that thing that's going to make people want to buy into that newsletter. And then you have the media buyers who, once the sales copy is written, mm. media gut buyers go and buy the traffic into that the copy that was written, which sells the guru's thing. And it's just this sort of closed loop triangle of media buyers buy traffic to the copy, copy sells what the yeah. guru made and yeah it's red i mean it's it, it's it's it, a hit factory model it's a hit factory and they are the first to admit that they don't do everything else mm -hmm. well they do that thing really well mm -hmm. and if you think about it it's absolutely impressive because they're not doing a lot of other things like they don't have a big emphasis on branding or social media or you know uh, they do me you know media buying but it doesn't seem like it's a huge i mean it's a big piece but like it's really like think about the email systems and the hit factory thing that well you their just whole explained. philosophy is if you have a really good offer with really good copy traffic is easy right yeah. like we we've, yeah. we've, we kind of know this too but um traffic is never the problem no right if you're not getting sales it's a conversions problem which is why they put so much money and so much of their effort on focusing on copywriters mm -hmm. agora is known for having the best copywriters on the planet basically mm -hmm. and they recruit amazing copywriters and they're all about the copy and the great thing is that most of these copywriters obviously they have head copywriters or leads um but most of them are actually been started at the intern level and moved up mm -hmm. because they're using systems and they have a freaking formula for everything they yeah. do and they study i think something else that was cool is that they study from related uh companies mm -hmm. so like if they're writing a sales page in a space they're going to study the copy of a relevant thing really deep for that one thing yeah but a media buyer is also going to study the company, but also just study the media buying types of copy. Mm -hmm. So, because different copy for different uses, but tying mm -hmm. it together. But if you start to identify like a, a competitor uh, in your space, like they can, they look at, you know, like Motley Fool, for instance, mm -hmm. is a uh, financial company that they can really, that does a very similar model. You got to look at these big companies and there's usually patterns you can spot. Yeah. And that's pretty much all they're identifying and doing. Yeah. Over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> for sure. So what what were some of the, for you, what do you, what do you think some of the like um, bigger kind of like aha moment takeaways that you've had, maybe from like that, that, that higher level perspective of like, I've always sort of looked at this from this angle, but because of this event, maybe I'm kind of seeing it from this angle now. Hmm. What would that be? I mean, honestly, just because it's been a, on a topic that we've talked about is that self-image thing mm -hmm. I think is huge. And it was interesting to hear uh, like Alex Jeffries, for instance, he was one, uh, one of our first coach mm -hmm. that we've hired when we started back in 2009. Eight? somewhere in there 2008 yeah. 2009 one of those two day, uh, years and uh, he he's continued to be a friend of ours since mm -hmm. then and was at this event mm -hmm. and he's buddies with rich sheffer and he's been in the game a long time and does extremely well but he said a story in the live stream that um he would go do a big launch make like millions of bucks and then he always had this like threshold of like ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars that he never wanted to get behind or under and he would kind of like, yeah, yeah, the ride to the top. He would show up and, you know, show the world what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. And then it almost just let it go back down because that was like his comfort zone. Yeah. And it was a self-worth thing is what he was saying. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, he wasn't, he didn't felt like he was worthy of the money. Yeah. So instead of, you know, being like, oh, no, I'm actually, now they made like a couple mil or whatever launch. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the numbers were, but I'm just hypothetically yeah. like, why not make $100,000 your baseline in your bank account or your worth level? But, you know, without really figuring out the self-image part, he found himself going back to, you know, really low numbers and having to basically go and relaunch. And mm -hmm. this cyclical, you know, cyclical thing, and really until he figured out, no, I'm the fucking man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, I am worthy of this, obviously. I have a track record. Uh, something I've realized and with us as well is 
you almost get too close to what you're doing mm -hmm. and others usually see your value and how good you are at something. Mm -hmm. But we are so resistant to believing it or mm -hmm. even seeing it or accepting feedback like, oh my God, you guys are the best at that, you know, whatever that thing might be. Yeah. And, you know, like folks said that about uh, just the way that we run this podcast for one, mm -hmm. but also just in person. Like we were approached by many people that didn't know us mm -hmm. that happened to be some freaking awesome people, legit folks that we didn't know prior to. And they're like, they just looked at us. So like, you guys seem like cool dudes. Mm -hmm. And then like they would turn into like a two hour conversation. And yeah. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, there's a joint venture that came from that. And you, whatever it might be a partnership deal, but it came from like, oh, it's just the way that you guys are. Yeah. The way that you, um, you know, communicate and just act. And those are things that a lot of like us, sometimes we just don't think about. Yeah. I think we have an aura of those are two normal dudes over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. And for, and I think it's an accepting thing, you know, yeah. it's, it's getting comfortable with that. And just actually, you know, from that, I feel like there's a, uh, you can kind of train yourself to be like, no, fuck yeah, I'm worth it. I'm worthy of this thing or I am that thing. Mm -hmm. I think when you lean into it, which is my bigger takeaway here at a high level is like, oh no, I am the man at this. Yeah. And really believe it. Well, I know, I know it's sort of an overused term and it's kind of become a bad word a little bit, but I, I, I feel like the, shoot the authenticity thing is like, is like really key. Like uh -huh. the, the ones oh, yeah. that are really just like authentically being themselves. Like when you hear them on the podcast, when you see them in person, when you see them on YouTube videos, mm -hmm. when you list, read their emails, it's the same. There's this consistency of like, they're just like they're just them their authentic self like mm -hmm. this is this is who i am this is what you get no matter what medium you're sort of consuming my content from this is what you get when you meet me in person yeah. that sort of like authentic um this is who i am this is who i always am and this and just being consistent with who you are seems to be a big key to a lot of people's success mm -hmm. you know you, you you talk to some of these big name you know quote unquote gurus that are there and what you're finding out from them is that they're just normal real <laughs> dudes who like to chat about the same shit we chat about <laughs> they're into the same kind of stuff they all have favorite sports teams that you can kind of razz them on they all oh, yeah. have had failures in their business that you know that they're not so, super proud of but they're f totally willing to talk about them and share the mistakes they made along the way and mm -hmm. all of this kind of thing like that sort of authentic level is i think the reason why they a lot of these people got to where they are and i think that's sort of what really made the imposter syndrome kind of thing almost immediately go away. Like mm. the second we walked into Rich's house in, in Florida, mm -hmm. like we walked into his house, we we saw, you know, Mike Phil same over in one corner. We went up and gave him a big hug and mm -hmm. was like, what's up, buddy? And mm -hmm. then like we started talking to some other people and getting introduced to people we'd never met. And just like right off the bat, everybody was friendly and mm -hmm. just like chatty with us. Like we'd known him forever. Mm -hmm. And like that type of person seems to be the type of person that excels in this world that we're playing yeah, in. That's right, man. And you got to think how much you're like uh, when you can get to that point of just being free and easy and comfortable and being cool, acting like, I mean, you got to remember everyone's the same. Like mm -hmm. you said, at the end of the day, like underneath, there's always this thing, like, oh, this tinge of, yeah. you know, there's, and even, you know, if you get past that, I don't know if everyone always totally gets past that, but just being aware of it's good mm -hmm. when you're in it, like just realize we're all playing the same game. Yeah. But, you know, others of us have identified that yeah. and are comfortable with that. So really, you should never be like sticker shocked or like worried about approaching someone and just communicating. Yeah. I mean, we were si cool. We were sitting across the table from people that, you know, make a hundred million dollars a year. Two guys. Right? Profit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Like we talked. Well, I, oh, oh, I, so, so, I mean, some people. I'm some, not. Yeah. I'm not. I wasn't talking about anybody specific. Gotcha. I'm just saying we were sitting across yeah. the table from people that were doing like hundred million plus dollar businesses. Mm -hmm. And there was literally no difference talking to those people and the types of discussions we had and the types of advice they mm -hmm. were giving and the types of things they were doing to the discussions that we had with people that were making a hundred thousand a year, right? right. Like yeah. the, the discussions are the same. The fears are the same. The things that they screwed up have been the same. Like mm. the conversations are the same. There's literally like we, at, we actually, you know, uh, we were sitting across the table from somebody who's kind of newer in business and sitting to across it and sit next to that person at one point with somebody that was making like a hundred million dollars mm. in their business. And like, 
that conversation just felt like a bunch of buddies mm-hmm. just sitting around chatting. We were talking about drinking whiskey and, <laughs> you know, what our favorite foods were. That's and, right. you know, <laughs> we were talking to one guy about like his golf hobby and like all the different places he's been golfing. His Ferrari, and, Maserati. Yeah. All, I mean, like all these things. And that like, stuff came up, but, you know, like <laughs> it, they were the conversations didn't feel like we were sitting across the table from like a, a Richard Branson and we were sort of going, Ooh, this guy is, right. you know, up on a pedestal. It just felt like we were talking to normal dudes and that, I, I mean, I know what we've sort of beat this horse to death in this, in this conversation, <laughs> but like that was really a key takeaway for me was like, yeah. I think the reason people are gravitating to us and the reason that people want to have these conversations with us and the reason we get invited to these events is because the way we communicate with people, the way we treat people, the way we are when you hear us on recording and the way you meet us in person is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the character traits that have attracted people to us Mm -hmm. and and had them invite us to these kinds of events. And then we get out there and lo and behold, we fit right in with all of these people (laughs) when it comes to the conversations, you know? Yeah. No, it's interesting uh, because basically we were told that the way that we approach things, the way that we uh, treat our list, that we communicate and that we see people that, you know, that we sell things to or give content to like yourself, um, I guess it's very rare. (laughs) And these are from, you know, it's like we were told like the way that you're approaching things are extremely rare, you know, that you actually care Mm -hmm. (laughs) because uh and i was telling um some people it's like it's seriously all we know yeah and um but that's i think the rare part and there was a sign walking through a hair here actually that was uh i think i pointed it out to you i'm like see we got to remember that and i forget what the saying was yeah you you already forgot it we'll walk by it again maybe (laughs) i'll take a picture of it but basically it was like uh, just be human Mm -hmm. just remember that anyone you're speaking to through this microphone, even though we can't see you yeah. <laughs> listening, um, but all the way to the person that's behind the desk of a Starbucks, you know, barista or taking your order, they are human. Yeah. Well, one <laughs> and, of the people treat them as such, and then when you're sending emails to them, don't you know, s- uh, smash the, or uh, blast the list. Mm-hmm. Don't hit the list. Mm-hmm. All these terms, like I know James Shramko, a good buddy of ours, will say that it's like, no, hold on, watch your terminology. Yeah, because that's really that's literally sinking into your subconscious of how you treat people in general. Mm-hmm. You're not, it's not a quick hit. You're not just bashing. You know, like no, no, no. You're communicating. You're giving yeah. value. You're actually a you're relationship to humans. here. Yes, remember that, and it's going to go a long way. Yeah, I mean, one of the people that we met at this event for the first time, and um, you know, we were familiar with his work, but we we never really had any sort of connection to him prior. Was Mike Long? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And um, I remember him because he was involved with the Bring the Fresh with Kelly Felix, Stomper which was a product. Net. That I bought yeah. and he was involved with Stompernet a few years prior to that and we were very familiar with some of the products that he'd been involved with but we really had no sort of connection to him before mm. this event but we were um, we were hanging out with him in his hotel room last night and um, that was sort of one of the big topics that we were talking about is mm-hmm. that so many people forget that in marketing those are humans on the other side mm-hmm. like everybody listening to this podcast is a human with real I mean I hope so I'm assuming um, with you AI know, is listening to but Google yeah they're transcribing everything big tech but you know everybody's like they're, they're human beings that you know they have fears and vulnerabilities and mm-hmm. goals they're trying to achieve and you know worries and uh, like the whole range of emotions but I feel like so many marketers just see it as numbers I I've got a list this size. My open rate is this. My click rate is this. My conversion rate is this. My CPA, my CTA, my CPR, mm. my CPMs, my PPCs, my FTCs, my okay. No, I could keep going, um, but everybody just sees it ter- all they're as not terminators. Yeah, 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 they're human. It, everybody just sees it all as like numbers. Like everybody just like marketers see everybody as just this numbers game. Mm. And I think what really has a big relation to success is seeing this as people seeing it as souls that we get to communicate with right Mm -hmm. like that is what i think really is a differentiator between what a lot of the really successful people are doing and the the wannabe marketers that Mm -hmm. are out there hitting their list smashing the smashing the list right um Um, you you reminded me of a dude we met on the plane mm -hmm. on the way to florida yeah this guy named russ yeah who uh shout out russ if you're listening because now he knows of our podcast yeah um the dude immediately like when we sat down uh in in the same row 
he just we were in the exit row actually yeah and yeah i was by the window matt was in the middle and the rust is on the left and mind you, he had like freaking, you know, necklace of like teeth and all these like interesting beads mm. and stuff. And mm-hmm. never asked him what that was all about. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was like, oh, don't worry. He's like, if this thing's going down or whatever, I got the door. I want to, I, I know exactly how to save us all. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm prepared. Um, but we told him, like, we immediately got into this like big conversation, deep conversation about this kind of stuff. And he like flowed and we were going into it. But the way we described our podcast and what we do, he's like, dude, you're literally waking people up. Mm-hmm. You're changing lives. And uh, it was something that we've been talking about a lot. Mm-hmm. And it plays right in all of this stuff, too. Is like, you know, it's the people that can't speak like themselves mm-hmm. and like how they communicate with, you know, their buddies. Yeah. And then, um, you know, so that's one example. And that was a really cool guy. Maybe we might even have him on the show because he's an interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hall of Fame arm wrestling champion. Yes. And legit. And he knows a lot of pro skaters and interesting yeah. people. He's immersed can... in the skateboarding world. Yeah. It's so, pretty cool. But um, there was something that you and I were talking about, too, is like there's sometimes a disconnect when people write copy and, and create content as well. Like mm-hmm. for selling purposes, they kind of lose their voice a little bit. Yeah. Um, and just remember again that's where your voice comes through as well so don't start just like copying some, you know sales copy and thinking you have to use these specific words or mm-hmm. things like some people were saying like dude when you're selling your egp letter like literally your style should be how we're talking here yeah it should just be a video be like dude come on really yeah 15, 15 bucks come like on. really come on. you're do you not realize how easy that's like a that's like a really cheap crappy food meal at mcdonald's yeah or you know starbucks exactly like, so it's just like just 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 buy it below yeah yeah <laughs> like literally they're like and these are some of the biggest like yeah, you know, copyrights to them it's like yeah that's your sales video yeah <laughs> so it's like just think about how you can extend that into your own brand mm-hmm. use your voice everywhere yeah yeah no i think i think that's a a big thing and and really just that that human element too just that mm-hmm. remember that you're talking to other humans on the other end of of these emails on the other end of these text messages you're sending on the other mm-hmm. end of your mini chat broadcast like these are people Bull. they are not a number and like that is uh, I, I you know all this sort of fly by night marketers that pop up they do a big launch and they disappear mm-hmm. they're playing this numbers game they're it's they're forgetting so. that yeah. like all these people that just bought their course they're you know they wanted a piece of you when they're buying the course they're they're trying to buy a piece of of you it's it's you that they're really going after and you know the information is is great they're going after the information but they're really buying based on your merits and what you put in that sales message and as soon as you make that sale and then disappear on them because that's just a number Mm -hmm. that's just a a dollar amount that you you made as opposed to this is another person that i'm helping you know that's that's where you see the people kind of pop up make some money and then disappear next thing you know Mm. you're like oh you're working at taco bell now cool (laughs) don't (laughs) all right so i'm sure there's some uh, yeah all right, there's two topics, and these are quick ones, mm-hmm. uh, because I think what we were just covering was a overarching big one. Yeah. So let's give, I have two quicker ones. I can okay. lead, lead it off with one and then bounce it to you if you want right. to pick two. All right. And then I think we should probably start to wrap it up after that. because yeah, we got to run for a plane. Exactly. And um, there's a lot more, so I would say another therapy session. Or maybe we'll throw an extra this month or something with maybe. more takeaways. All right, so first one. Mark Ford, mm-hmm. he is uh, one of the owners of Agora, and uh, Michael Masterson is his pen name. He's written numerous books. Check him out. I'm sure you have already. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ready Aim Fire is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, ready, ready Fire Aim. Ready Fire Aim. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not re- Ready Fire Aim, which actually plays into. Uh, I'm actually not going to read his thing yet. I'm going to go to my second point, but now that this makes more sense, this is something Rich said, Mm -hmm. and he read it somewhere, but it was about perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And this actually... I I wrote down the same thing. This one, yeah, this one hit me, and because I guess him and I share this quality, I think a lot of people do, Mm -hmm. is uh, he said, this was the quote, I'm pretty sure it's word for words, from some book. He didn't name it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doesn't matter. The quote's what really hit him, and he said it hit him hard. It says perfectionism is convincing the world to believe in something about me mm-hmm. that isn't true mm-hmm. or that I don't believe myself or that yeah, I don't the, believe myself. The way I wrote yeah. it down was believing was? something, uh, making the world believe something that I don't totally believe myself essentially. Yeah. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. essentially, yeah. And it's, 
So if you're looking at your self-image or self-worth and all that, you're almost trying to paint this picture that's not you. Yeah. So and that's perfectionism, but that's not what people want. Yeah. Or if it is, then you're going to have a struggle fest trying to do that all the time for the rest of your life. Yeah. For your brand, selling, personal, whatever. So think about that if you feel like a perfectionist. Yeah. Do you really want the world to believe in something that's not true about you? Yeah. And then that's just going to go in your conscious thinking that that's you, but... Yeah. So be you. Yeah. So I'm going to share something that's a little, a little tactical. I want to give some Mm -hmm. people like a cool tactic that I heard. And to be honest, I don't actually remember who I heard it from. So that's cool. What is it? I apologize. But uh, one thing that somebody said that I thought was a cool, like tactical thing that you can do is if you're trying to grow your brand, you can go find YouTube videos, right? And mm-hmm. go go find these YouTubers that will do interviews, but they have like a large subscriber base. A lot of people, you know, follow their YouTube channel. Go to them and say, hey, would you be open to interviewing me on your YouTube channel? And if you interview me on your YouTube channel, I will drive a ton of traffic to that YouTube video mm-hmm. that we do together. So if you interview me and, and put me on your channel, I can drive uh, 10,000 views to that video. Does that sound like a, a good deal, mm-hmm. like a good exchange? Mm-hmm. I'll give a great value in the interview. I'll, well, because it's a branding thing, right? We're mm-hmm. not we're not really necessarily trying to sell. Maybe if they let you, you sell. But um, as a branding play, look, interview me on your show, get me in front of your subscribers, and I will drive more traffic to your channel. And then what you go do is you interview them, and then you just run YouTube ads to the mm-hmm. channel. You just elevate that YouTube yeah. video. Through, pre-roll ads. Yeah, yeah, with pre-roll ads, which you know might cost 10 cents a view or less, right? Mm-hmm. If it's a wide target. Yeah, yeah, if it's a wide target, it might cost you like 10 cents per view or less, and you just go and you know buy a couple hundred dollars mm-hmm. in, in ads to that thing. It's a win-win. They grow their channel. You get to build a brand off of their existing audience, and uh, it's it's a great branding play, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that was one cool takeaway that I... That I think one of the Agora people were explaining um, mm-hmm. that is something that they've experimented with, but um, I don't remember exactly who said it, but I thought that was a really cool tactical thing that people can try. That's a good one. Yeah. And uh, so I, I said Mark Ford before, and this is what he was saying. So, um, and Mark Ford, he, you know, he is definitely a very in demand guy that you don't see much. Mm-hmm. So it was an honor to be able to spend, you know, an afternoon with him, which is rad at Rich's place. And he was talking about how, um, uh, you know, the articulation of things are so important. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, in a nutshell, it's not about the idea, Mm -hmm. like your big idea about the thing, like, oh, this is groundbreaking. Uh, Basically, the ideas of everyone's had probably the idea that you've had in some variation, Mm -hmm. but it's the articulation of that idea Mm -hmm. is what makes it unique. And the example he gave is think of all the hit music that's out there right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like a hit new song every day in some kind of genre. Yeah. Uh, think about the number of notes and chords available to these musicians. Mm-hmm. They've all been done. They've yeah. all been played. But for some reason, they're just played in different ways. Mm-hmm. The articulation is different. The mm-hmm. wording is different. The lyrics are different. The music, chord structure, all that stuff. So this is the same way as presenting new ideas online and yeah. how you articulate your your value to the world. Just keep in mind that you know, you have your unique voice that could be like a new podcast or whatever, but like that's your own articulation of Mm -hmm. this big idea that you're giving to the world. So I thought that was really cool because people think they need to be, have this new perfect thing, shiny thing. Like, no, just put your own spin on it because you are unique and bring that to the world. Yeah, I like that. And then I, I guess else? my final one, I'll, I'll, I'll share one more tactic from, from Kurt Molly and, you know, yeah, he, he, our boy. I'm sure he's totally cool with me sharing it. If not, <laughs> you know, whatever, invoice me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's good. He will. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he will now. Uh, yeah. So he was telling us, so we're talking about running some webinars in our own business yeah. and, um, you know, we're going to start doing webinars around promoting the evergreen profits letter. And typically when you create a webinar, you create like a webinar registration page, you go buy like ad traffic from Mm -hmm. Facebook or Google, you drive it to the registration page and you know, you might be able to get a registration on a webinar for between 10 and $15 per registration. Mm -hmm. What he was saying was take your entire webinar, make it a Facebook video ad and just run that Facebook video ad inside of, of Facebook Mm -hmm. with a video views. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, true view. No, the video yeah. view, uh, 
whatever instead of going oh, for clicks oh, objective, or traffic yeah objective, objective that's yeah. what i'm looking for <laughs> yeah with the video view objective and he said that you can get people to watch your entire webinar for like i mean obviously it varies from niche to niche but he's he said they're seeing things like we're getting somebody to watch 100 percent of the webinar for like three dollars would you rather have somebody watch 100 percent of the webinar for three dollars or would you rather have them go to your landing page register the webinar might be a day or two later so hopefully they show up to the webinar and then stick around to the webinar and just to get somebody to register for the webinar not even mm -hmm. to show up for the webinar you might end up paying 10 to 15 dollars mm -hmm. well on facebook you can get three dollar for three dollars somebody to watch the entire webinar from start to finish what do you think is more valuable yeah. right and i <laughs> loved that idea i mean we're gonna run both we are right we're gonna run ad traffic to a webinar registration page mm -hmm. but then maybe as like a retargeting play anybody who registered but didn't show up just show them the webinar on facebook let mm -hmm. them start seeing the webinar that they just missed and let them just watch the whole damn thing on facebook mm. yeah and then you can also retarget based off how long they viewed the thing yeah. from facebook from the long version yeah. maybe retarget them to a landing page where they can go buy the thing yeah so, yeah. so you may see some of that kind of stuff coming out from us as you we launch this will. webinar <laughs> you will you will um i think what we're going to do is do another breakdown episode of cool takeaways or maybe we'll yeah. just sprinkle them into other episodes not sure uh, definitely as an egp letter subscriber mm -hmm. or just evergreen profit subscriber whatever we're calling this thing now it's evergreen profit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um is we send out actually now this this week was the second week of a customer customer email that basically mm -hmm. throws down a bunch of insights mm -hmm. so more and more we're going to actually put that in email form it's almost like a mini weekly newsletter just for customers yeah uh who are our customers yeah so it, um if you're not you should you know 15 bucks in is and i think this one that went out today as we record this recording this on a friday yeah um the one that went out today i actually think had a shit ton of takeaways it from does. uh you saw them from our event <laughs> yeah so um if you if you're an evergreen profits member obviously you get the evergreen profits letter mm -hmm. um in the mail if you're a if you're um a print subscriber if you're a digital subscriber then you get it access in the members area uh you get access to all of the the videos and all of the additional training that our you know our podcast guests provide for us but now we're actually doing a weekly friday email newsletter with mm -hmm. just like these are some great insights from throughout the week yeah and all the cool stuff that you really should be aware of yeah so <laughs> we're, we're trying to make that 15 dollars a month just like a crazy stupid no-brainer like holy shit matt and joe just kind of give us everything for 15 dollars. that's the idea right? <laughs> you pick, pick and choose what you want yeah so um, i'm not, not trying to make this a, a sales pitch just trying to let you know that a lot of these takeaways that if they're, they're not on the podcast we're definitely still sharing them across the print newsletter the email newsletter mm -hmm. the members area we are we are talking about all this stuff and then we also have our, our hustle and flowchart group which is at flowchartgroup.com we want to make an easy url flowchart group. Yeah. so if you go to flowchartgroup.com we actually do discussion threads on every single episode now so if you enjoy this episode or if you have questions for us or when we have episodes with guests you can go to that discussion thread on facebook and continue the conversation with us right inside of that flowchartgroup.com there it is. <laughs> All right. Um, I just looked at the clock and we got to get boogieing. Yeah, we got to run. So, so. <laughs> uh, a little bit shorter than normal. Um, but like Joe said, we're going to be doing one therapy session a month. So whatever we didn't get to in this one, will probably pop up in the next one. <laughs> It'll happen. All right. Thanks for watching. Let's watching. Whatever. <laughs> See you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out all the good stuff from this episode we actually have a nice simple notes version that you can find on our website so go to evergreenprofits.com find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes thanks for listening go get it wiki wiki <laughs>